the Pokemon franchise is no stranger when it comes to convoluted and confusing timelines. Between the games and anime, it can be hard to keep track of everything, even more so as the series continues. Of course, the Pokemon manga is in the same boat. Sorta. While the manga has a far less confusing timeline, it still has its moments where it can be hard to pinpoint events. Alongside that, the serialization of the series can be even more hectic than the chronology of the story. In this video, we'll be going over three things. First, we'll go over the official timeline as shown in Pokespedia. In addition, I will be filling in the gaps left by Pokespedia the best that I can with evidence that I've found. To wrap that section up, I will explain what order to read each chapter. Spoiler, I don't recommend it, but you can read them in any order you want. Second, I will do my best to explain the order of events in the history of Pokemon Adventures as serialization and publication. While I don't understand it perfectly, I think I can give a basic understanding of its complexity. I also want to talk a bit about the creators Hidenori Kusaka, Mato, and Satoshi Yamamoto and their experience writing and drawing the series. Lastly, this is technically the recap video for the Heart Gold and Soul Silver chapter of the manga. This chapter is the reason I started to question the timeline of the series as well as its publication into English. While I don't have a lot to say about it, I still want to briefly go over my thoughts on what was good and bad. Well, with that out of the way, let's get started. As I stated earlier, the Pokemon Adventures timeline is fairly easy to follow, save for a few specific moments. I will be talking about minor spoilers for most of the arcs, but I will refrain from major story spoilers. As we go, I will do my best to explain why each chapter fits into its spot on the timeline. Before the events of the Red Green Blue arc took place, there are some things that I want to mention. Side note, I always refer to the characters based on their Viz Media translations because that's what I read, so that means I'll refer to this person as blue and this person as green. Moving along. Six years before the first chapter, Green was kidnapped by the Mask of Ice. Four years before the first chapter, Blue went to Johto to train with Chuck. And lastly, two years before, Crystal trained on Mount Mortar. These are just some small preliminary details that I thought would be fun to include. Now we'll move through the timeline. The events of the Red Green Blue arc take place, and two years later, the Yellow arc starts. One year after the Yellow arc, the Gold, Silver, Crystal arc begins. Two years after that, the Ruby and Sapphire arc takes place. We know this because of a flashback during the arc that takes place five years prior, around the end of the Red-Green-Blue arc. Just six months after the end of Ruby and Sapphire, the events of Fire Red and Leaf Green take place. Another three to four months after that, the events of Emerald take place. The Heart Gold Soul Silver arc happens around two years and six months after the conclusion of the Emerald arc. Based on what Carr says, Fire Red and Leaf Green was three years prior, and by doing the math, you get roughly two and a half years. About four months after that, the events of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire take place. This arc flashes back to that same incident told in Ruby and Sapphire, saying that nine years had now passed, so it's been four years since Ruby and Sapphire. This is where the timeline starts to get a bit confusing. Give or take three years after the events of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, the Diamond and Pearl arc starts. This can be inferred by taking a look at the Mount Silver training one-shot that takes place just after the end of Gold Silver Crystal. One of those panels shows a comedy duo on TV, this same comedy duo is what inspired Diamond and Pearl to be stand-up comedians. They saw this duo when they were around 4 years old. They are 12 at the start of their journey, and after doing the math, the gap between Oris and DP is roughly 3 years. Somewhere in between that, the events of Pokemon Ranger take place. While Ranger is a spin-off, it's confirmed to be in-universe with Pokemon Adventures. It also happens to be written by Kusaka and drawn by Yamamoto. Two weeks after the events of Diamond and Pearl, the events of Platinum take place. Approximately three years later, the events of Black and White start, and two years after that ending, Black 2 and White 2 starts. It's stated in Black 2 White 2 that Team Plasma started their operation five years prior. At the end of Platinum, Luker goes to Unova to investigate Team Plasma. Some more quick math shows that this gap is around three years. Topping it off, Caitlyn goes from Castle Princess to Elite Four member during that time, and has clearly aged a couple years. The gap between Black 2, White 2, and X and Y is uncertain, but there are three theories supported by evidence that might give us some insight to where it lies. Two of them are strong, and the other one is my own crackpot theory. We have a general idea of the time of year that these events take place, thanks to some dialogue about school years. In short, X and Y could either take place during Black 2, White 2, or a year or so afterwards. My theory that I don't necessarily agree with is that X and Y takes place during Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. According to Pokespedia, we know that Blue trained in Kalos sometime between the Gold Silver Crystal arc and the Heart Gold Soul Silver arc. We can narrow this down even further to the time between Emerald and Heart Gold Soul Silver. During that time, Blue traded his Rhydon to Silver, which evolved into Rhyperior during the process. In X and Y, Blue once again has his Rhyperior, and Diantha notes that he didn't have it when he was last here training. 
Pokespedia also says that this is the same Rhyperior that he lent to Silver. All this really does is confirm that X and Y takes place after HeartGold and SoulSilver, but we know that Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire also follows HeartGold SoulSilver. During Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, Red makes an appearance and notes that Blue is not in Kanto. On top of that, Pokespedia mentions that Blue's age during X and Y, along with Red and Green's during the time of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire is intriguing, but we know Red and Green's age at that time. They were 19 and 20 respectively according to the time spans pointed out in the manga. Curiously, Blue also has the same design in X and Y as he had in HeartGold SoulSilver, similar to Red and Green from the Emerald arc to the Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire arc. Obviously, this isn't enough to go on, but it still makes for some fun speculation. Moving along, Sun and Moon takes place roughly 5 months after the conclusion of X and Y. We know this because Cena and Dexio were sent to Alola at the conclusion of X and Y, and in Sun and Moon, they state it's been 5 months since they left Kalos. Lastly, we don't have any conclusive evidence when Sword and Shield takes place, but we can assume that it at least happens after X and Y based on this statement from Piers. With so much content, it can be hard to know where to start. Do you go to the newest iteration, or do you start from the very beginning? There really is no wrong answer with Pokemon Adventures. Each arc can be read entirely on their own. It's not recommended for the best experience, but you'd be fine if you did. While you don't need to read all of the arcs, you will definitely miss out on the overarching story, as well as some fun callbacks. That said, if you're determined to read the arcs at random, here is a simple guide to know what arcs affect the next, and what ones stand more on their own. If you want to, you can follow the chronological order, but in my opinion, the best way to read Pokemon Adventures is in its release order. Speaking of the release order, that brings us to our next segment, the serialization timeline. To be completely honest, I don't quite understand how the manga was serialized each month. I did find some documentation, but it's all in Japanese, and Google Translate will only help so much. From what I can gather, they were able to release roughly three chapters a month at the beginning. The chapters were typically not in sequential order, and as such, multiple story arcs could be told at the same time. For example, the first month when it was serialized, alongside chapter 1, chapters 4 and 6 came out. The next month was 2, 5, and 7, and so on. Later on, the chapters were organized into proper sequential order when they were volumized. The manga began publishing in March of 1997. It has a pretty simple run following the games as they were released. Near the end of the year 2000, the original artist, Mato, had started to have some health issues. As a result, they were unable to keep up with the demand and eventually decided to stop drawing for Pokemon Adventures, their last chapter releasing in February of 2001. Satoshi Yamamoto picked up where Mato left off the following month. In 2004, during the serialization of the Ruby and Sapphire arc, the Fire Red and Leaf Green arc started publishing as well. A year after that, the Emerald arc started publishing alongside the both of them. At first glance, it seems like a lot, but with their usual three chapters per month, they were able to have three arcs run at the same time. It was basically nothing new, other than the fact that the different stories they were telling were part of different arcs entirely. 2006 saw the end of the Ruby and Sapphire arc, with the Diamond and Pearl arc starting shortly thereafter. Fire Red and Leaf Green ended just after the start of 2007. After Fire Red and Leaf Green ended, Emerald took a hiatus during the release of its last two chapters. I'm not sure why though, because Diamond and Pearl kept up with the three chapters per month at the time. Anyhow, Emerald ended near the end of 2008, and Platinum started near the beginning of 2009. 2010 was a busy year for Pokemon Adventures. Diamond and Pearl ended at the start of 2010, HeartGold SoulSilver started a month later, Platinum ended a couple months after that, Black and White started two months later, and Heart Gold Soul Silver ended just before the year was over. The frequent release of the Pokemon games had started to become apparent as to how quickly new chapters would come and go. The typical release of Pokemon games went two main titles with an enhanced version coming out a year or two later. This allowed Kusaka to continue writing with the same main cast and share more of their story. However, this changed with Black 2 and White 2. The Black 2 and White 2 games were direct sequels to Black and White. As such, the Black 2 and White 2 arc of the manga followed suit. This sort of threw a wrench into the formula. Because they were direct sequels, Kusaka had to tie the stories together, meaning they couldn't publish alongside each other like previous arcs had. Fire Red and Leaf Green did publish alongside Emerald, which was basically a sequel, but it was a much different case. The characters used in those were very different, while the Black White Black 2 White 2 cast had many of the same characters. You couldn't start publishing Black 2 White 2 during Black and White without spoiling the end of Black and White. To keep up with the games though, a prologue chapter was released shortly after the release of the Black 2 White 2 games in 2012. This later became chapter 7 of the volumized version of Black 2 White 2. 
A year later, the Black and White arc ended, and Black 2, White 2 started. But Pokemon X and Y were just a few months away, and when the games did come out, Black 2 and White 2 was put on hiatus, while Kusaka and Yamamoto worked on the X and Y arc of the manga. We'll come back to the repercussions this had on the publication of the series later. For now, let's continue on with the timeline. At the end of 2015, the X and Y arc was well into serialization, and the Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire arc started alongside it. Near the end of 2016, the Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire arc ended, and so did X and Y. The Sun and Moon arc started up right after that. During this time, Black 2 and Y2 were able to get a couple new chapters, but then went on another hiatus until the beginning of 2019. At the end of 2019, the Sun and Moon arc ended, and the Sword and Shield arc picked up immediately afterward, while the Black 2 and Y2 arc continued serializing. Finally, close to the beginning of 2020, the Black 2 and Y2 arc came to a close a little over six years after it had started publishing. At the time of this video, the Sword and Shield arc is still being published. Over all these years, Hidenori Kusaka, along with Mato and Satoshi Yamamoto, has kept up with the demands of the manga industry. In 2012, they went to two chapters a month due to a magazine ending, and after Black 2 Y2 ended, they are only doing one chapter a month. Recently in 2021, Kusaka had some health issues, but he's doing a lot better now. I'm very happy with the series, but I hope that they are getting the rest that they need. To be doing a series as long as they have, it's incredible that they have rarely missed a month, especially when working with a company as strict as the Pokemon company. I imagine it's very hard to be original and creative while still staying within the confines that they are given. Not only that, they typically only get access to the game like two months ahead of the release dates before they can start working on the next arc. That said, they both seem to be very happy with the Pokemon franchise. They are still able to exercise creative freedom even within the constraints of the Pokemon franchise. I think that's why each arc seems like a new genre entirely. It can be a comedy, romance, school life, you name it. Kusaka is a great writer, and you can tell that he enjoys his work thoroughly. Yamamoto is a huge fan of kaiju like Godzilla, and has always wanted to create a manga about them, and in a way, he's able to do that with Pokemon. The series has an impressive history. Being able to run as long as it has is shocking to say the least. And while its serialization has been smooth for the most parts, its bumpy parts have rippled their way into the publications. Let's talk about the ripples that the Black 2 White 2 arc made, and how they affected the publication of the series. Like I said prior, the manga was serialized out of order, and was put into a chronological order when published into volumes. That's how it's always been done with this series, even when the generational arcs would overlap in serialization. Once one arc was finished being volumized, the next would be able to start right away. Thanks to the whole Black 2, White 2 kerfuffle, this was halted for a time. However, they couldn't just not compile the chapters into a volume. That's how publishers and mangakas are able to make a lot of their income. So the mini-volumes were introduced for better or for worse. I first noticed this at the end of Heart Gold Soul Silver. The last volume of that arc was surprisingly thick, while volume 1 of the Black and White arc was very thin. This is simply because they are published differently in English than they are in Japanese. The problem I had when I noticed this was when I was purchasing the first volume of Black and White, I was a bit confused on what to get. Later, I found out about the mini volumes that were releasing while Black 2 White 2 was catching up. The mini volumes are interesting because they are the bare bones basic chapters that were originally published in the magazines. The standard sized volumes are in a sense the complete version with extra chapters and pages added in. Look at these two versions of Black and White Volume 1. One is the mini, and the other is the standard. These particular volumes contain the same content, but the standard volume has some additional content that wasn't in the original magazine publication that we have with the mini volume. Now that Black 2 and White 2 have caught up, the standard sized volumes have also started to come out again in Japan, as well as here in the West. My first impression of the Heart Gold Soul Silver arc wasn't the greatest. I found the introduction chapters to be very slow and a bit boring. It starts out with Gold checking out the recently built Pokeathlon. After that, it moves on to following Gold and Silver as they investigate some strange happenings revolving around Lance. Crystal shows up to round out the trio, and it all culminates with them fighting the bad guy and dealing with Arceus. This arc is weak. I think the main reason was the length of the arc, as well as how much they try to fit into it. I also think its biggest crutch was how long it takes to get going, and when it finally does pick up the pace, it does an all-out sprint to the end. Rounding out the things that I didn't like was the way some previous antagonists were introduced to the plot. I felt that it was a bit divisive to the endings they got in prior arcs. If this arc did anything right, it was using the blatant marketing ploy to its advantage. Let's face it, the manga exists to promote the video games. This is why with each arc, we see the gimmicks from the games make their way into the story. But because of this, we were able to go back to Johto and catch up with some fan-favorite characters. 
There wasn't a lot of character development done for the main cast, but at least we got to see them interact with each other and the world around them again. My favorite moment from the arc was when Silver and Crystal meet up. They have this nice moment where Crystal helps Silver, and Silver realizes again that he doesn't need to do everything alone like he used to. Crystal then gets self-conscious about her new outfit, saying that she doesn't want Gold to see her in it. Then as you flip the page, you find Gold fawning over the Kimono Girls. I burst out laughing over this whole scene, and it does a phenomenal job of showing the dynamics between the Johto trio. Pokemon Adventures may be another cog in the machine that is the Pokemon Company, but it's clear that its creators do care about what they're making. Through the many years and struggles the creators have had, I'm glad that they kept up with it because what they've created has always been an incredible adventure. Hey all, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed our video on the Pokemon Adventures timelines and Heart Gold Soul Silver. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more. We also do a ton of other videos on our channel on a variety of different subjects. Please check them out as well. If you are interested in how we make some of our videos, you can subscribe to our Patreon to see more. Thanks again, and as always, keep it rad.